This week's lecture is for breast treatment. So we're going to show one way that you can set up a breast. There are probably as many ways to set up a breast as there are cancer centers. I've treated in probably 15 different cancer centers and I've seen 13 different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you a way to set up a breast. It is not necessarily the way to set up a breast. Depending on where you happen to be located, they may have variations on this exact same theme. This is just how we happen to do it, for the most part, here in Amarillo. So, what we have is just like a chest, we're going to have a three-point setup, two laterals, and an AP mark. You're going to line up two lateral marks. Let's pretend we did all of our rolling. You've got both of your lateral marks on. You're going to make yourself on, left and right, and in out to your AP sternum mark. Then there is going to be, in this particular case, a VSP at this point. There's two ways to do this. You can have the, the VSP first and then the shift second, or you can do the shift first and the VSP second. I tend to prefer to have the VSP first because the sternum is a more stable location to set most women up than the middle of the breast. On Pixie, obviously it's not an issue, but the breast is tissue that tends to move around and not necessarily be in the same place every day on some individuals. They're going to be more stable right here in the middle. This particular technique is basically, for lack of a better term, you're going to a set up, shift, a set a depth, and then shift. Okay, so our, our depth is basically going to be set with the VSP. When you ballpark a breast, your laser is essentially going to fall halfway between the mid-axillary line and the anterior flash. So your laser is going to end up somewhere in here. Your sagittal laser will end up somewhere between midline and the lateral flash, so somewhere right in the middle of breast. So you're going to have two lasers coming right through here. In order to achieve that, we have to do several shifts. So we're going to set our first our VSP on this particular case is 95.5, so we're going to set 95.5. Then we have a lateral shift. The lateral shift is 5.5 centimeters. So we're going to go ahead and use our digital readout. You don't have to see this on film, just know that if you have a digital readout, it is more accurate than using a ruler. If all you have to use is a ruler, that's fine. It's approximately right there. So we have now moved the patient so that left and right, you're in the middle of the organ to be treated, the breast. Up and down, you basically moved to the middle of this volume, which includes the mid-axillary line all the way up to the anterior. You see our laser and our basically crosshair has bisected the breast into quarters. One, two, three, four. Then you rotate the gantry to your prescribed gantry angle. When you get there, you may or may not be on your medial mark. So, now we've got the gantry at the correct angle. The treatment takes place across this plane, comes in at a tangent to the breast, a lot of times you're going to have what is the equivalent of a half beam block, either using the jaws themselves, which I'm using in this particular case, or a multi-lead collimator or a block. You're basically causing this beam to be relatively half beam to the anterior. That way, the actual treatment is a flat, relatively non-diverging beam on the posterior edge and then it diverges on the anterior edge. What that does is it decreases exit dose into deeper tissue than you want to treat. So you don't want to treat too much lung from both sides. So what that does, since you're closing your jaw to here, you're creating a nice flat edge of incidence between the two tangential fields. These are usually parallel opposed or thereabouts. In this particular case, it's going to be parallel opposed. 
if the field size has to be able to be very large and then you have too much divergence posteriorly, you can rotate, you can over rotate the gantry so that you're not parallel to pose. You're more than 180 degrees apart. Like we talked about in class, if you're, a, if you're parallel opposed and half beam, you're going to have a flat angle of incidence deep in tissue. If you have to overcompensate, you're basically going to bring your gantry to where you're over 180 degrees off on each tangent. Instead of flat, you're going to come up like your, the posterior edge of your beams are going to be something like this. So, that's our essential setup. Once you've got this taken, treat from this angle, rotate around, treat from the other angle. Now, if you are going to treat a superclav as well, that's what we'll talk about in the next section of video. But the first thing I do want to show you before we get there is you also have divergence to deal with on the superior edge and the inferior edge of this beam. I want to demonstrate exactly what that divergence looks like for our next section of demonstration. So if you'll come right over here, you'll be able to see that the superior edge of the beam actually diverges. If you're looking at it, instead of being flat, you've got, you can actually see that angle of divergence from the superior edge of the beam. Obviously, you can see the beam is larger here than it is up there. It, you have divergence on the superior edge, the Y1 section of that beam. So you've got a divergent field, both inferior and superior. That's going to become important when we start matching beams together if you have to have a superclav treatment for this particular person.